the only way you reduce health care costs in the long run, it's very simple, is you have people receive less treatment. And there are two ways to get people to receive less treatment. One is to uh, get them to voluntarily accept less treatment. And the way you do that is you make them see a price and, and either through a higher deductible or a higher copay and they voluntarily, uh, uh, facing that price, uh, decide to consume less. The alternative is you don't charge them a price, but you ration care. And those, those, those are the only two ways that you reduce utilization of health care services. There's no mystery here. You either incentivize consumers by charging them a price that reflects what they consume, or you ration care to them. And, and there's no other way around it. And, and, and I, I don't think uh, any uh, honest observer would, uh, would dispute that. Well, the question has been asked uh, by many observers whether the uh, proposals before Congress for health care reform would actually reduce health care costs. And now, a lot of claims have been made in that regard. I think the answer to that question is that the current proposals will not reduce health care costs. Um, the, uh, the problem is the following. The, uh, the current proposals have a lot of additional mandates in them uh, for private insurers. Uh, you, see a, you see a lot of mandates uh, for things like community rating and guaranteed issue as well as coverage for lots of, uh, of afflictions that private insurers maybe won't automatically cover. And that's going to increase costs. And so there have been a number of studies, uh, uh, not, not, not without controversy, but certainly out there that have, by some, some by the insurance industry, that indicate that these increased mandates would increase private insurance costs a lot. The other, I think, more concerning part to me as, the, as an insurance economist is, is the, uh, the effects that, um, that some of the proposed uh, reforms would have on the incentives that we talked about earlier. Uh, I, I think uh, it's pretty clear that uh, if you want to reduce health care costs, it's important to get people to voluntarily consume less health care. And so one initiative in that direction that has been on the books for the last few years are high deductible uh, health insurance policies coupled with health savings accounts and the idea behind these is that the individual buys an, an insurance policy with a high deductible and then is able to put money towards the deductible in a, a tax preferred uh, savings account uh, that they can then take money out to meet their deductible if they need it. Now the advantage of a high deductible policy is when somebody's thinking about going to the doctor, they realize you know, that the, the, the up to the first $2,000 or whatever the deductible happens to be in their case, that's money out of their pocket. And so they're going to think carefully about whether they really want to go to the doctor or not, as opposed to the case where it's a free good and they just go down to the doctor. I'm really concerned about the fact that, the, that uh, one of the things that the current health care proposals do is they eliminate these health savings accounts, so they eliminate these incentives, uh, and, and, and that's going to increase health care costs. Uh, the other thing that they, they do is, 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 is the proposals eliminate the Medicare Advantage plans, and Medicare Advantage is where Medicare play, pays a private insurer uh, on a per customer basis to provide Medicare type coverage to, uh, to retirees. So instead of going to Medicare, uh, you go to the insurance company who is paid by Medicare to provide coverage. Now, you know, these Medicare Advantage plans have, 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 have been viewed suspiciously uh, by Congress because they rely on private insurers to provide the coverage. On the other hand, if you go to Medicare, uh, you have to buy your own Medigap coverage and, and you have to pay a part of your prescription coverage. It turns out a lot of these health care advantage plans uh, ha have Medigap coverage already in them as part of the coverage and they have uh, prescription coverage that's better than is provided by Medicare. And so particularly for people at the lower end of the income spectrum, these, these Medicare Advantage programs have been very popular and provided them with much better coverage than they could have afforded if they'd gone by met, through normal Medicare, yet these things are being stripped out in the, in the proposals that we're seeing in Congress now. 
Well, there have been some questions asked about you know, are there other ways of reforming health care other than the public option, other than increasing mandates on existing insurance companies. And, and, and as an economist, I, I, I think that one of the most important things that we can do is incentivize consumers of health care uh, to, uh, to, to understand the costs of what it is they consume. Now, the ways of doing that are you increase the size of the deductible they have to pay before the insurance kicks in, or you increase the copay for what they pay when they consume health care services. And what that does then is it, it makes them make a decision about health care costs that, uh, that, that, that benefit the costs and the benefits, as opposed to just providing health care as basically a freebie when they go to the doctor where the entire freight, except for a nominal copay, is paid by their health insurer. And we are starting to see uh, health care providers start to talk about uh, uh, costs more than they have in the past. In the past, you know, when you went to the doctor, nobody talked about cost because you didn't care because the insurer paid. What did you care? You know, it's, it's a freebie. Now, uh, the, the, as with higher deductibles and higher co-pays, customers are concerned about what these, co what these costs are, and they start to ask questions. And we're starting to see, too, insurers providing websites where, where customers can actually go and see what the costs of the procedures are at different hospitals and different doctors. And so I think that we will see a lot more price competition amongst health care providers when uh, consumers of health care, people like ourselves, are incentivized by price to start to shop around. So I, that, that, I think, would, be, would go a long way towards reducing health care costs and, and, and making consumers more sensitive to, uh, to the cost of what they consume.